I want to take the next few Thursdays and deal with this subject of the name representing all that Jesus is. Uh, very important where healing is concerned. And uh, Psalm chapter 103 is where we'll begin. Let's pray and we'll start. Father, thank you for this great opportunity that you've given us together around your word concerning this subject of healing. We have seen and known and understand that it's your will to heal us. And we thank you for those promises in the word of God. Now we thank you that it manifests in our lives, in our bodies, in the lives of those in our families. We're just so grateful and we thank you for the healer being in our midst. We thank you for the healing anointing flowing. And we pray in the name of Jesus that your power and your ability and your might would manifest in these services. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So Psalm chapter 103. And he starts off in verse 1. And he's... The psalmist, David, he's saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Then he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Now what he's going to do is after this verse, he's going to then list five benefits. Five benefits that we should not forget. Now we'll go through them uh, very quickly. Number one, who forgiveth all your iniquities. Number two, who heals all your diseases. Number three, he redeems your life from destruction. Number four, crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And then number five, satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, very quickly, we can see that three of these five definitely have to do or at least could have to do with healing. Number one definitely has to do with it uh, or the second one who healeth all your diseases. And then secondly he redeems your life from destruction. Well being healed of sickness or disease would redeem your life from destruction. And then number five who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So that's a restoration, that's a, a, a redemption. So three of these five benefits, one of them definitely has to do, and the other two very strongly have to do. Now, he says here, who he, in verse 3, who healeth all your diseases. So the first thing to see is he can, he will, his desire is to heal all of your diseases. Now when he says your diseases, we know David's talking to a people group. He's talking to the nation of Israel proper. But the point is, is the word of God was written to the believer. So I can personalize it by he heals all of Philip's diseases. Whatever disease may uh, try to attach itself to me. Uh, it says here that he heals them all. Now the reason that's so important is because, well, it, it harkens back to something that I taught on Sunday, that it's all things. If I see this word all, it removes the limit on what I can believe God to do. All right, if he says he heals all your diseases, then there's no disease that can come up that not only does he not have the power to heal, but there's no disease that can come up that he's not willing to heal. Because when you see this in verse uh, 3, that he heals all your diseases, God has placed his word and his name on the line as going on record that he will heal all your diseases. So when I read this verse, it's not just a promise and very often we miss the, the point of a promise. Promise comes from that, well, we, we don't even have them so much today in the United States anymore, a promissory note. You know, uh, it used to be uh, if a person did not have the, the, the funds to pay for something, they would sign a promissory note. 
Okay, I'm putting my name down here. I'm signing this and I'm making a promise that I will pay this. All right. Well, what God has done is he's put this down in writing that he's the one that heals all of our diseases. Well, God never says he can do something without there being a knowledge that he's willing to do what he says he can do. It would, it would be uh, cruel. It would be very uh, mean, for lack of a better term, for someone to tell you they have the ability to do something and then refuse to do it. I have the ability to heal you, but I'm not going to heal you. Now see, uh, and I don't want to get off on a, on a rabbit trail here. I don't want to muddy the water. But that's why it's so important that we took the first few weeks of these healing schools to outline and define that it's always God's will to heal. There's never a time that it's not God's will to heal. God never says, no, nope, I'm not willing to heal you for whatever reason. All right? Even if a person has something that's stopping the healing flow from operating in their life, it's not because it's not God's will. It's because there's something that's stopping it. So my job then in that situation is to identify what may be hindering it and remove the blockage so what God wants to do, He can do. Amen. So this is important. It says, who healeth all your diseases. Now the word healeth there is the Hebrew word rapha, R-A-P-H-A. It can be one derivative of it is rafika, R-A-P-H-E-K-A. But it is, it is the word rapha. Now the reason this is important is the word healing there, again that word rapha means healing or healer. Uh, it can also mean restoration or cure. But here's the important part. Uh, in Exodus chapter 15, Exodus chapter 15, the Lord had just brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And he says, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, and, uh, or to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Notice, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, sometimes there's a, a uh, misunderstanding. People will say, well, I thought you said God doesn't make people sick. And then it says that he brought all these diseases upon the Egyptians. Well, he's referring to the plagues that befell the Egyptians. And if you will look back and study, you'll see why they befell the Egyptians, because they wouldn't do what God said. But here's the point for our teaching. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now that's the same word in Psalm 103, verse 2. The Lord that healeth thee. He said, who healeth all your diseases. Now what this does, when he says, I'm the Lord that heals you, this forms one of the seven compound names of God. There are seven compound, name for God in, compound names for God in the Old Testament. We're not going to go through all seven of them. But this one is the Lord that healeth, or the Lord your healer. All right? It's, it's a compound of the Lord, Jehovah, and Rapha. Jehovah, Rapha. Jehovah, your healer. Jehovah, the healer. Now, the reason this is so important is this is one of his names that he identified himself as in the Old Testament. Now, all of these names, the seven compound names of God, all of them represent not only something God uh, can do, it rep they represent something that God is. All right, so He not only can heal, He is our healer. And He named Himself that. God called Himself by this name, Jehovah, my healer. So it is a personal relationship. I have a personal healer, and 
he outlines that here in these verses. Now, the reason that this is so important is everything in the Old Testament were types and shadows of what was to come in the New Testament. Now, while we may know that, we've got to un understand something. Jehovah Rapha is one of the things that God called Himself in the Old Testament. All right? He called Himself that to His people. But when we move over into the New Testament, there's something that we need to, to see and to have a revelation of. In uh, John chapter 15, we begin to see something. And we'll get into some interesting things here, but John chapter 15 and verse 16. Notice what Jesus said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you <clears throat> and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain so that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in, notice, in my name, He may give it to you. In my name is so important. Why? Because what Jesus does here in these verses is here we're given the power of attorney to use His name. Now I went there to Exodus 15, 26 and outlined that to show you that is one of the names that God, God called Himself by in the, in the Old Testament was Jehovah my healer. Uh, he also called Himself some that we know and are very familiar with, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, or the Lord who sees and who provides. Uh, he called himself Jehovah to Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. All right? So my point is he called himself by these different names, but then in the Gospels, Jesus starts talking about receiving what we ask for in His name. Alright? So we're going from names of God to a name. Names to a name. And he says, notice, very important to look at this, these verbiage, whatever you ask in my name, He'll give it to you. Now again, I know that the way that I teach can be simplistic. But whatever means whatever. See, this, this is so important because healing is a whatever. And he said, whatever I ask the Father in His name, He would give it to me. So He's giving us here power of attorney. In uh, E.W. Kenyon's book, the, name, the, the Wonderful Name of Jesus, uh, Kenyon made this statement. He said he was ministering in a, in a, in a church and uh, that he was ministering along the lines of the name of Jesus. And he didn't quite understand uh, everything that he was getting into, but he was using these different verses like this, whatever you ask in my name. And he said there was a man there that was an attorney and he began to talk to him and explain to him what the power of attorney means. And basically the power of attorney, we know that it means to act on the behalf of another person or to represent another person, all right, just like that person. If I have the power of attorney over a certain person's estate, then I can sign checks in their name and pay their bills. I can do things for them just like it's them. That, that's that's the, the importance of the power of attorney, is I am acting and I am uh, 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 functioning just like 
I'm them. I'm, I have their power of attorney. And he made this statement. He said, if language means anything, if language means anything, Jesus gave the church power of attorney to use his name. Power of attorney depends upon how much authority there is in back of the name. The power of, of attorney depends upon how much authority there is in back of that name. Well, Jesus begins to give us a idea here when he said, Whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name. So we see first off then that the name of Jesus carries tremendous weight with the Father. Because he said whatever he asks, we ask in his name, he will give it to us. There are things that you have to have absolute certainty and absolute faith in. The first one is you have to have absolute certainty and faith in that the word of God is absolute truth. John chapter 17 verse 17 says, sanctify them through your word, your word is truth. Truth in the absolute sense. It's not just a truth, it is absolute truth. Uh, you have to have complete certainty about that. Because when you approach the Father, you approach Him on the basis of His Word. All right, If I don't have an absolute conviction and an absolute certainty that the Word is truth, then there's going to be, there's going to be the uh, propensity for doubt and not faith. Secondly, one of the things I have to have absolute faith and certainty in is in the name of Jesus. I have to have absolute certainty that that name holds and carries authority in three worlds. That it carries authority in, in heaven, it carries authority in the earth, and it carries authority under the earth. I've got to be absolutely certain of that. It moves heaven, it changes circumstances on the earth, and it binds up the forces of evil. I've got to be absolutely certain of that. Now, in John chapter 14, verse 13, Jesus says another of these whatsoevers. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Amplified Bible says that uh, I will do I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name. And here's what's so important. As presenting all that I am. And here's the important thing. In the Amplified Bible, the words I am are capitalized. Now, this is important because if you will remember in the book of John, when they came to the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Jesus, he went to meet them and said, who do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And the King James Bible says, he said, I am he. Well, the he is in italics. We know it when they're in the, in the original version. But here's the point. The I am is capitalized. And the moment he said, I am, those 600, 700 or so soldiers fell on their backs like dead people. Why? He was uttering who he was. I am. See, he says in the Amplified Bible, as presenting all that I am. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, the name presents and represents all that Jesus is. That one name represents all that God is. And then he said, so that the Father may be glorified through the Son, I will grant, I myself will do whatever you ask in my name as presenting all all that I am. So the name presents all that Jesus is. Now, whatever that is. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you take those seven compound names of God in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, they're all found in one name, in the name of Jesus. There's still the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but in the Old Testament, He presented Himself as their healer, their righteousness, their, their Almighty God, their provider, in the New Testament, we're presented with Jesus and His name in doing all those things that all those other names in the, in the Old Testament represented. We find that presentation in the name of Jesus. All right? Now, 
Hallelujah. In uh, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. The reason this is so important, and because many people, and I, I know this isn't you, many people, Jesus' name is just a tagline to their prayers. In Jesus' name. Well, but if you think about it as power of attorney, if, if I was Vernon's power of attorney, you know, over all of his millions, uh, <laughs> if, if I was his power of attorney, I would, I would write a document or something of that nature, and basically I would say, in Vernon Newman's name, I'm presenting this to you. I have the power of attorney, and it's in his name that I'm coming. So why do we end our prayers in Jesus' name? That's not the end of the prayer. That's the statement of authority that I know I possess in the name. So when somebody says, I am healed in Jesus' name, I'm not just being religious and putting an end on my prayer. I'm saying according to the power of attorney that I have in that name, I now call on the forces that are resident within the Lord that heals me. And I'm thanking Him for my healing in Jesus' name. I'm exercising my power of, of attorney. And in Matthew 28, it says something here. Verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them and said, Notice, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that's something. But then he says this, Go ye therefore. Now, therefore, Charles Capps always used to say, When you see the word therefore, stop and see what it's there for. All right? Because it's talking about something that was said previously. All power, now the word power there is the word authority. All right, all authority. Now remember, authority is given for two reasons. Authority over something and authority to do something. All right, I've got to have authority over things and authority to function. All power in heaven and in earth has been given to me, he says. All power, all authority in heaven, and or all authority in heaven and on earth has been given. Go ye therefore. So because this power, this authority has been given, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now people will take this right here and turn it into a theological argument. Do you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you baptize in the name of Jesus? Which one? Titles or the name? Well, here, here's the thing. Isn't it plainly written what Jesus said? Plainly written what Jesus said. These words are in red. We don't try to change it. But here's the point. This, this word, in the name, it's into the name. Into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or into the authority. Then he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now watch. And lo, I am with you always unto the end of the world. Now think about this. People say, yes, yes, he's with me. He's, he's in my heart. He's with No, no. What did he leave us? His name. How is he with us? Through the name. He's with us through his name. Now, here, here's why. Because he's not talking about just living life. He's talking about going and doing something. He's talking about going and teaching, going and healing. And he says, I'll, I'll show you this even clearer in just a moment. He says, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. All right, Jesus is with us through his name. Now, in Mark 16...
one of the things we have to see is when we say in the name of Jesus, it is, it is just as if Jesus was presently there personally making that request himself. It brings Jesus presently into the circumstance. Right? Actually, presently, physically, if you will, into the circumstance. In Mark 16 and uh, verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. Well now, see, what we've got to do is determine, when he says believe, what do we, what's he mean believe? What do, see, here's the thing. People will say, well, I believed on the Lord and I was saved, or I believe that Jesus is Lord and I'm saved. That's true, but you also believe in something else. You believe in the name. And he says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. Notice they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So they lay hands on the sick in my name, and in my name they shall recover. So what this is, very often we make much of healing anointings, and gifts of healings, and working of miracles, and we should, that's in the Bible, they operate in the church. But here's the thing, this is a promise given to every believer that they that believe in the name will lay hands on the sick in the name, and those that they pray for in the name will recover. That's, that's what the Word says. That's why I have to put a lot of stock in the name of Jesus. Because He said that when hands are laid on in His name, they will recover. They shall recover. Not might, not maybe, they shall now, people will get in and say, you know, nobody's 100%. Listen, if I'm going to ever receive from God, I've got to look at the Word for what it says and receive it. The simplest way to receive anything from God is just take the Word at face value and believe what it says. Period. What's the Word say? Then that's what I'm going to receive. Well, I knew so-and-so and they didn't get healed. That doesn't count. Now, does that make sense? That, that, that doesn't count. Yeah, but I knew so-and-so and they got sick and died and I know they believed. No, you don't. You don't know they believed. No one can be certain that they were believing. That's, that's why the Bible says it's not my job to judge another person or to judge their faith. It's my job to keep me where I'm supposed to be at. To walk in healing, you have to keep yourself where you need to be where the Word of God is concerned. Be, and so when I see this, he didn't say I couldn't lay hands on myself. I can. Amen. And receive in the name of Jesus. So we take this at face value for what it is. Now look at verse 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Oh, but wait a minute. Verse 19 says, So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Well, if He was received up into heaven and was sitting at the right hand of God, and they went everywhere, how was the Lord working with them? And how was He confirming His word with signs following? Well, what was His word? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They went everywhere and preached the word. They laid hands on the sick in his name. And because they used his name, the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word with signs following. Because they used his name. See, I, I go back to this power of attorney again. If I have power of attorney over a person's estate or over their, 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 their funds, all right, and I make a withdrawal in their name, that organization, that facility works with me in his name. 
When we use the name of Jesus, the Lord works with us and confirms the word and confirms the word with signs because we're functioning and using that name. Hallelujah. See, you cannot separate the man and his name. You just can't. You can't separate, you can't separate me from my name. My name, who I am, will be, will be, uh, who I am will be played out in my name. If I have integrity, my name represents integrity. If I have no integrity, my name represents no integrity. You can't separate me from my name. You can't separate Jesus from his name. You can't have the name and not have the man. You can't have the man and not have the name. Just like in the Old Testament that we read where it said, I am the Lord that heals you, you can't separate God from being a healer because he called himself our healer. Then in the New Testament, in the four Gospels and in the New Testament, he put all of that power in the name. Why? Because when Jesus paid the price for our redemption, the Bible says in the book of Philippians that he was given a name that was above every name. Well, what does that mean? People say, yes, cancer's a name. It's above that name. And this, it is. And, and, and it is above those names. It is above every name that God has ever called himself by in the past. The name of Jesus is above every one of those names. Why? Because all the power of the Godhead, all the power in heaven has been encompassed and placed in that name. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus said the name presented all that he is. So the name of Jesus represents and has in it all the power of all the names of God found in the Old Testament. I mean, for instance, when he called himself Jehovah to Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. But the Bible says that once I believe on Jesus, Jesus becomes my righteousness. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that Jesus has been made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Well, how is Jesus then made unto me righteousness? Because that name, Jehovah to Sidkenu, is found in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus fulfilled everything necessary for every one of those names to function in our life under His name. It's just like every one of the feast days have been fulfilled in Jesus. Every one of the holy days have been fulfilled in Jesus. I don't have to celebrate Passover. I don't have to celebrate any of these days because they've all been fulfilled in Jesus. They're interesting. It's neat historical content, but it has no power for the New Testament believer today. The power is found in the name that fulfilled all the promises, that fulfilled all the feasts, that fulfilled all of the, the requirements, and in that name of Jesus, all power has been invested. All right? And when I function and operate in the name of Jesus, it, it brings Jesus personally, physically on the scene. Hallelujah. So the name of Jesus brings Jesus physically into the situation. The name of Jesus brings Jesus physically into the situation. Now, in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, this is a familiar passage of Scripture. Verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Well, how did Peter know what he had? This is the first recorded miracle that we see. Now, there could have been more because Mark says they went everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. So I'm not going to say that there were none before this, but this is the first recorded miracle that we have 
after the day of Pentecost. And Peter says, silver and gold I don't have. Now people will argue there and and, and try to point out that they were poor. I don't know if if he didn't have no money or if he forgot his wallet. That's not the point. (laughs) He says, he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Then notice, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. In the name What's Peter doing? Exercising his legal right to use the name. He had the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus in this circumstance. And he's saying, listen, silver and gold is not what you need, but what I do have, power of attorney in the name of Jesus, I'm going to give that to you. I do have that. And in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Somewhere... Somewhere faith came to this man in what what he heard. And when Peter pulled him up, he leapt up and began to leap and walk and praise the Lord. Even though he had been crippled from his mother's womb, he never had walked. He He was over 40 years old and he'd always been at that gate. But one encounter with the name of Jesus brought complete healing and restoration. Why? When you encounter the name, you encounter the man. When you encounter the name of Jesus, you encounter Jesus. And and that's why it's so important that when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. We believe I'm healed in the name of Jesus. You know, there there are denominations that won't, what they call, invoke the name of Jesus. And and when when they end their prayer, they'll say, in your name. Or in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's real liturgical and real religious, but it's not real biblical. And we want to be biblical in everything that we do. So when we lay hands, it's in the name of Jesus. Yes, there are healing anointings, and we walk in that, and, and the gift of he- gifts of healing, working of miracles, operate in this ministry. But I've seen more people healed by simple faith in the name of Jesus than any other way. It's just because the gift doesn't operate all the time. But your faith in the name of Jesus, can operate every day. There's not always going to be a gift of healing or a working of miracles. There's not always going to be a dynamic show, but there can always be faith in the name of Jesus. And when the symptom arises, you have to take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Because I'm, I'm using the power of attorney that was given to me. When, when, when uh, Peter, the Bible says that the church was multiplying, and it says that, that with great power, the disciples gave witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, how did they do that? Through signs and wonders. And what occurred? The Bible says that there were so many people that needed to be healed. They brought them into the street and laid them on the sides of the street so that if by chance the shadow of Peter might touch them, all right? And it says, they were all healed. Well, it wasn't Peter's shadow. It wasn't Peter. It was the power of attorney that he had. See, the early church put much stock in the name of Jesus. Nowadays, we put much stock in supernatural manifestations. Now, don't misunderstand me. We have those. But I'm saying, we put much stock in seeing. They put much stock in the name of Jesus. Why? That's all they had. They didn't know anything about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. That didn't come till many years later. But they had the name of Jesus. And they saw dead raised. They saw blind eyes open. They saw paralytics healed. They saw all manner of sickness and disease healed. They saw demons cast out. Why? Because they invoked the name of Jesus and operated in their power of attorney. And when they did, Jesus showed up. So when we say, in the name of Jesus, Jesus personally comes on the scene. 
and personally begins to operate. Now, notice in verse 16, Peter is preaching in the temple, and he says, and his name. Now, notice that. And his name through faith in his name. Now we see what the man put faith in. So Peter tells us how this occurred and what the man put his faith in. Through faith. Now through is that preposition that denotes the channel or the conduit that something occurred through. All the way in, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. You see it over and over again. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 different times, 36 different times. We see the word by faith, the word through faith. It's the channel. It's the means that something happened. So his name through faith in his name. So the name was the channel. Now people will say, oh, now Jesus healed that man. But Peter said it was faith in the name. This is important. Why? Why didn't Peter say Jesus healed him? Because he put faith in the name. The name of what? The name of Jesus. Now, people will say, but Pastor, you know, that's just semantics. That's just dallying about words. No, it's not. Because Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man put faith in the name. And a healing came to him through the name. Now, here's the question for you. So, when you look in the Word of God, all the way through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you see where it says, Jesus laid hands on the sick and healed them all. Now, think about this for a minute. Was Jesus then the channel and the conduit and the, and the means that the power of God flowed into that person and healed him? He was, wasn't he? If, if he, laid hands on, he laid hands on a blind man, healed him, Right? How, who'd the power flow through? Jesus. The man, Jesus. Here, Peter says, he put faith in the name of Jesus. And notice what he said. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. The name and faith in the name made the man strong. It was just like Jesus standing there laying hands on that man. And he says... Whom you see and know, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have to give you in the name. One translation says, in, I do have the use of the name of Jesus. So I may not have silver and gold to give you, but I can use the name. Hallelujah. Do, do you see that? I can't. I can't, I, can't, I can't fix everything, but I can use the name. And, and that's what we've got to remember when it comes to receiving healing and it comes to walking in healing. I don't even have to know why. I don't need to know what all the symptoms are. I just need to know that I have the use of the name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the name of Jesus... Produce the same results that the man Jesus had been producing prior to the crucifixion. The name of Jesus produced the same results. And notice who gets these results. Anybody that will believe. Anybody that will believe. Notice here in uh, Acts 4, verse 16. Am I helping you with this? Amen. Acts 4, verse 16. This is the uh, religious leaders that says, What shall we do to these men? For indeed a notable miracle has been done by them. What we just saw in verse 6 of chapter 3. It is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them, that they speak henceforth to no man, notice, in this name. And they called and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name. See, already the devil is attacking the name. I mean, we're not, 
we're not but months, maybe, weeks into the birth of the church, and already the devil's attacking the name. Well, well, why? Because in one day, 3,000 were saved by believing on that name. Another day, 5,000 were saved by believing on that name. I mean, he could not contain the one man, Jesus, and now he's got nearly 10,000 people that are believing in the name. His days of fun are over. Amen. Nothing he can do about it. And so already they're attacking the name, and you'll even see it today. You'll even see it today. People don't care if you pray in the name of God. It's the name of Jesus. That's a problem. Why? Because the devil's twisted it. it the, he's, he's twisted the name of Jesus to, 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 to look divisive to people. Because Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Well, that's what he said. So he is the way, the truth, and the life. How? The name of Jesus. So my point is, people don't care if you pray in the name of God or, or, or you know, even if, if you just say amen, just don't say Jesus' name. That's why it's a big thing for people to stand at political rallies and pray in the name of Jesus. Because it's always brought division, but it's always brought the power. And it always will bring the power. Hallelujah. Now, in Acts chapter 5, verse 27. And when they brought them, they set them before uh, the council. And the high priest asked them, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you notice, you have filled your Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So notice, here we have it again. We told you not to teach or to preach in that name. Now, here's part of the reason. The name was producing results. You shut down the name, you stop the results. See, the name of Jesus will produce the results that Jesus said it would produce. And uh, then in verse 40 of the same chapter. And to him they agreed, and when they'd called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. They, te they cease not to teach and preach the name. Why? That's, that's where the power's at. That's where the power's at. That's where the power's at. If, if you teach the name, the power will follow that. In uh, Acts chapter 8, Verse 6, actually verse 5. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things that he spake, hearing and seeing the miracles he did. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed. There was great joy in that city. Now notice verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now remember, the kingdom of God is salvation. So Philip was preaching salvation. He was an evangelist. That's the primary message of the evangelist is salvation. He was preaching salvation, but he was also preaching the name of Jesus. Well, the, preaching the name of Jesus is what produced miracles and healings. It followed the preaching of the name. So when you preach the name of Jesus, when you declare the name of Jesus, miracles and healings follow that. 
It's the power of authority that we have in His name. See, the early church knew the power that they had through the name. And especially in churches, in local churches, what we have to be more cognizant of is that we're teaching people what they have the power to do rather than have people look at us as the only ones that have power to do anything. We've got to be cautious with that. And so when the name of Jesus is used and the name of Jesus is in manifestation, healing signs and wonders are what follow. Hallelujah. Now, John chapter 16. John chapter 16 and uh, verse 23. And he said, In that day you shall ask me nothing. Truly I say to you that whosoever shall ask the Father, notice, in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto you've asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. So he says, up till this point, you've not asked anything in my name to the disciples. But then he said, ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Now notice, whatever you ask, in that day you'll ask me nothing. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, notice these words, he will give it to you. He will give it you. Now, my brother, sister, there's not a lot of room for doubt there. This is, this is where you, you take the Word of God at face value. If he said he will give it, now here's what we're, I, listen, I got a letter from a pastor the other day, bless his darling heart and stupid head. I got a letter from him, and, and here's what he said. You know, we've been praying, I, I say a pastor, this this. He thinks he's a pastor. He's really not. But he said, we've been praying about these things. And he said, now I understand that when you pray, there's three answers that can come. Yes, no, and wait. Well, too bad that's not what the Bible says. Now, here, the reason I'm telling you this is here's what people say. Well, yeah, he'll give it to you. And they tag it eventually. No, when is faith? What's that? Now. Faith is always now. And we put faith in the Word. So whatsoever we ask the Father in His name, He'll give it to us now. Yeah, but I don't see it. Yeah, but you remember what Brother Jerry said last night. If, if I told him, Brother Jerry, I want to buy you a suit before you leave town, he said, I would immediately say, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Why? Because he knows I'll keep my word. I'll be honest to him about it. Well, here's the thing. Can God lie? No. Does God lie? Will he lie? Then that's, that's the epitome of integrity. And Jesus, now here's the question. Does Jesus lie? Can he lie? Will he lie? Okay, Jesus said concerning the Father, whatever you ask in my name, he'll give it to you. Period. Period. So because this is healing school, whatever healing you ask in His name, He'll give it to you. And, and it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't, it, listen, they're, they're over and over again. People say, yeah, but I've just been dealing with this for so long. You remember what the woman said? It, it, and, and the Bible's very clear to point this out to us for a reason. It says she had suffered for 12 years with the issue of blood, and was nothing better, but was growing worse. It was getting worse. It was, it, her sickness was progressing. But it says, when she heard of Jesus, now you can't separate the man and his name. All right? When she heard of Jesus, she pressed through the crowd. What is pressing through the crowd? illustrative of she physically really did that 
But for us in the church today, that represents her desire. That represents her willingness to do what needed to be done to what? To get to Jesus. It, it represents our earnestness in our believing, our earnestness in our praying. When we go to, to, the, to the Father in the name of Jesus, even if it's something I've been dealing with for a period of time, here's what I've got to settle and here's what I've got to, I've got to get in my mind. If you're here today and you've been dealing with something for a number of years or a number of months or even a number of weeks, here's the issue. You've got to quit wanting God to heal you and settle it. I'm asking for this in the name of Jesus and I believe I have received. Period. Well, I don't see it yet. That has little or nothing to do with anything. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Why? Because faith is the substance. Run, run over to Hebrews 11 real quick. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. No, notice verse 1. Now faith is the substance. The word substance means grounds, confidence. One translation says title deed. Uh, it's the Greek word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S, -I -I and it carries this idea of a bridge from one point to another. All right? So faith is the grounds, the confidence. Faith is the title deed of what? Things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now watch, we can do this literal, uh, 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 gra grammatically and not be incorrect. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. But yet, if I have faith, I have evidence. Now here, here's a question. Is it more important to have the car you have and possess or to have and possess the title deed to that car? title. The title. Why? Because if you're driving a car and you don't have the title to that car, you probably stole it. <laughs> and legally you don't own it because you can't produce a title. When, when Pastor Michelle and I got married, she had one of those cars. <laughs> had no title and I'm not going to say all that happened there, so praise God. Anyway, that was many years ago. But the, the point is, could not, and you know what? That car, one time she was coming home and it was dark and they had, they had taken the, the layer of asphalt off the road. You know how they'll strip the road down and then come in and put new asphalt on it? Well, it leaves those manhole covers sticking up about this tall and she didn't see it and hit it and just ripped the oil pan out of it. Well, we just, there was a guy in our church that owned a shop and we just had him come get it and junk it. People say, well, why didn't fix it? We couldn't fix it. We didn't have a title. There was, <laughs> there was nothing we could do for it. But the point is, is so in reality, legally, we didn't have a car because we didn't have a title. It could be in the parking lot, but legally it doesn't belong to me because I don't have the title deed to it. Well, I have the power of attorney. I have the ability to petition for things in the name of Jesus. I have to put faith along with that. Why? Faith is the substance. Faith is real. Faith is not some magical, mystical thing. Faith is real. It is substance. Faith is the transaction point in the kingdom. Faith is currency in the kingdom. Faith can be spent. Faith can be built. Faith can come. Faith can go. Faith can be weak. Faith can be strong. Faith can be great. Faith can be little. Faith can be big. It's, it's substantive, if that makes sense. And so, now faith, right now faith, is the substance, the grounds, the title deed. Here's the word confidence. I have to have confident faith in the name of Jesus. Why? The name of Jesus presents all that He is. And when I pray in the name of Jesus, He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, He would give it to you. Now, so if I ask in the name of Jesus, I have received. Look at Mark chapter 11. Again, these are, the, listen, these scriptures are, 
I, I realize, especially in our Word of Faith circles, that, that we have, I mean, we look at these scriptures all the time, but the point is, is to get the meat of what is being said. Jesus said here, verse 22, answering, Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God, or have the faith of God, the God kind of faith. For truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed, be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So first of all, I'll have what I say. And people say, how do you know that? Because Jesus said. That's, that's the scripture I was reading. And it says, have the faith of God. And one translation says, always have the faith of God. And I was sitting there in my recliner and the Lord spoke to me and said, every day is a faith day. Every day is a faith day. You exercise your faith every day for something. And so that's where the slogan for the t-shirts came from. Have every day is a faith day. But the point is, then he says, Therefore I say anything to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them. Not believe you receive them at the moment you pray. Believe you receive them when you spoke to the mountain. That's when you believed you received. And when you pray, you have already believed that you have received. I'm not praying to get it. I'm praying because I believe I have received. So you pray in the name of Jesus. When did you receive? When you prayed. Yeah, but I didn't see it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. You don't see them yet. Everything, the faith realm is a parallel to the physical realm. Everything that I need is all, look, look at Hebrews 11.3. Oh my goodness, I was not, I did not know we were going to look so much at faith, but that's okay, this is faith builders. That's what we do. Verse 3, he says, through faith, now remember the, the preposition through, it denotes the means, the channel, the, the way something comes. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Notice it does not say they didn't exist. It says they didn't appear. No one could see them. Why? They were in a different realm. They were in the realm of faith. Everything that you need, your healing, already exists. It's in the realm of faith. Every financial need that I have is already met. It's, it's in the realm of faith. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people make faith hard. Listen, faith is not hard, it's just different. It's just different. It's not hard. Why? I am hardwired to live by faith as a believer. All right? Uh, because how, why? The Bible tells us on at least three different occasions, the just shall live by faith. By faith. Through faith. The just, that's how we live. If he tells me three times the just shall live by faith, then it behooves me to learn what faith is and how I'm supposed to live by faith. So if, if it was hard, if it, listen, if it was so hard, God knows most people wouldn't do it. So it's not hard, it's just different. Why is it different? Because faith requires you believing what you can't see. It requires that you believe you're healed without feeling healed. It requires you believing that your body is responding to the word even though everything is crying out, I'm not healed. You're healed because the word says you're healed. Not, see, if you can feel it, it's not faith. If you can see it, it's not faith. You will eventually feel and see as a result of your faith, but if you have to feel it or see it, 
it's not faith. And that's why very often people pray in the name of Jesus, but then they want to feel something. Well, according to the scriptures that we have read, did Jesus say that when we use the name, He would work with us and confirm the word with signs following? So if He said that, then when I lay hands on people in faith, in the name of Jesus, Jesus is right there presently working with me. Yeah, but that person didn't get healed yet. Yeah, but they're not any better yet. I mean, you think I look bad today? Just wait till tomorrow. Because why? It's coming. I've taken it by faith. Well, how do I know when faith has taken root? How do I know that faith is operating in my life? It's a very simple equation. When I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I cannot fail, and I know that I have, I know that I know that I know. Yeah, the only, listen, faith is spiritual. And the only way I know to tell you this is this. You will absolutely be solidly convinced you have it. I mean, there won't be a doubt in your mind. Why? Because faith has come. And he says that it's through faith. So regardless of what I feel, regardless of, of what it looks like, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Regardless. Why? Because I have reached out there in... If Listen, the circumstance is designed to make you question what you've seen in the Word. Every time. Now, I have nothing against doctors, and I, I always reiterate that because... Sometimes people misunderstand what you're saying. I have, a, I have a personal physician. His name is Dr. Crook. Funny name for a doctor. But he's a good doctor. I, I enjoy, uh, uh, I should say this, I enjoy most of my visits with him. But, uh, I, you know, he's a good guy. We talk and, and, and uh, you know, he's a believer and he knows what I believe. But here's the point. Here's the point. Some people, that doctor's report serves as a voice of their circumstance to change things. I, and I've had people say, well, you know, I thought I was, but then I went to the doctor. Now, wait a minute, that, that should not change anything. Shouldn't change anything. Yeah, but what if I got to go back and have this treatment? Then you go have your treatment and you go in faith. That's just the way, yeah, but I don't want to do that anymore. I know, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I'm building my faith and I'm using the name of Jesus, then that thing is, look, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Hallelujah. If you are using your faith and declaring the name of Jesus, it is changing. I heard Charles Cap say this one time. He said, a lot of people will speak to the mountain and then they'll get up in the morning and look out the window and the mountain's still there and they go, ah, oh my God, it's, see, it's not working. He said, yeah, it's working. Those words are hollowing out that mountain from the inside. Faith, it, faith, faith, it, fa there's no guarantee in the Word of God that faith is always going to produce a tangible, seeable result tomorrow. But it's working. Why? Faith always works. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. David, Psalm 116, verse 10, talked about believing and speaking. We have the same spirit of faith. What does the spirit of faith do? First of all, it believes and speaks. Now notice what it says. In, uh, I want you to see this. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen, here's the word, are temporal. 
temporary. Temporary. One translation says, subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. In other words, unchanging, cannot be changed, are not subject to change. Now, why is this so important? What you're facing, physical challenge, it's, it's temporary at best. Well, how do you know that? Because the Bible says it's subject to change. If what you're facing became bad, it can become good. And if it can become good, it can become great. It's, you, you've got to understand that. This, this is how faith works. If your situation can go so drastically wrong, it can come back and be drastically right. But notice what, where, where the key is. Spirit of faith and keeping my focus on I'm not looking at the things which are seen. Now let me, let me make sure and clarify this. Not looking at the things which are seen is not denial. There's no power in denial. Well, I went to the doctor and they said I have this, but I don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible does it say, to call those things that are, you know, like they don't exist. It says you call those things that be not as though they were. Well, if you went to the doctor and you got a bad report, this is not good English, but you understand what I mean. So what is being not? Health. So what do I need? Health. So what do I do? Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, right there. I've entered into my power of attorney. Right there, everything that is God is represented in that name. In the name of Jesus, according to your word. Isaiah 53 and 5, 2 Peter 2, 24, Exodus 15, 26, Matthew 8, 18, whichever verses you want to use. By your stripes, I am healed. And I received that in Jesus' name. Now, is there, you, you, you've got to understand this. So, I have received it now. I believe I have it. One word for that word, believe you receive, is take. When you, when you pray, take it. All right, I have it. I take it. I have it right now. Now, what's the issue here? Now, i got to refuse to be moved by what is seen. Looking not at what is seen means that is not the basis for my decision. I look at the things that are not seen. Now, see, again, faith's not hard. It's just different. What is not seen? Well, in this case, it could be total healing. I don't see that, but that's what I'm looking at. I, I, so I'm not looking at the symptom, not denying the symptom, but I'm not looking at the symptom. I'm looking at what is not seen yet. Remember, faith is the substance of things not seen yet. So I don't look at the things that are seen. I look at the things which are not seen yet. If I'm in faith, it will be seen. Now see, here's where you got to move past what you've seen with other people. You never base your faith on what happened to somebody else. Faith is personal. Faith is personal. Or Roberts, one time they said, uh, Brother Roberts, what are you going to do if the next person you lay hands on dies? He said, I'm going to say, next? You know, and people thought he was being very callous, but his point was, I'm not in charge of, of, of healing. Now, a pastor, obviously, thankfully, can't act that way or, or speak that way. I mean, but my point, the reason I tell you that story is to say, if you know 50 people that said they were believing for healing and they all died sick, that doesn't change what the Word says. Amen. Yeah, but, you know, how come? Listen, 
There's no faith in the question. Ever. And you cannot hold on to the question and the answer at the same time. You've got to drop one of them. All right? Lily, our, our little girl, she, you know, she'll get two handfuls of stuff. And then she'll see something else she wants. Well, what's she do? Got both hands full. Going to have to put one of them down. Right? I mean, you, you understand that? You can't hold on to the question. Well, why? How come? Because that'll, that'll only let you get so far. That'll, that'll only let you get so far. And, and I've, I've had people, I've had people before, I've seen people before, they'll say, well, I knew brother so-and-so, and I know he had faith. Listen, it's easy to sound, and I'm saying this for a purpose. I, I'm not sure why, but I know the Holy Spirit's prompted me to say it. It's easy to sound faith-filled especially in the circles that we're in, because we're taught all the, all the slogans. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe, and I believe God's Word. Well, that's good if there's faith there. But if there's no faith, it's just a statement. It's just a positive statement. Amen. And, and, and I've talked to people before. Matter of fact, I knew a, an individual that died, and every time I talked to him, I mean, I was, I was believing all I could with them, and every time I would talk to them, you know, how's it going, and, and what's going on? Oh, it was, hey, great, everything's going great. Not a, not a lick of faith. Not a lick of faith. Why? Because there was never any receiving it in the name of Jesus. I have received it. It's always God will. It's always, I believe I'm going to be healed. You go from, I believe I'm going to be healed, to I am healed. And that's what you start. Before you prayed in the name of Jesus, you were going to be healed. After you prayed in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Period. Amen. You know, and, 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 and I have, I've had to stand in some things. There, there was something in a physical battle I was standing through. And it just, it came down to, what do I believe? Because if I believe this, then, then if this is the direction I want to go, then I've got to believe that I have received and make my stand on that. Now, notice, he said, we don't look at the things which are seen. So that doctor's report is a seen thing. It's not a bad thing. There's nothing evil about the doctor's report. You know, there are people, oh, the doctors, they just, listen, listen, there's a lot of Christians that would have died if it wasn't for doctors. Here's the point. The, 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 the doctor's report is not a bad thing. It's not a lack of faith. Going to the doctor, you will never lose your faith by going to the doctor. Uh, taking medicine will not hinder your faith, all right? But the point is, is I'm not looking at what is seen. Dr. So-and-so, I appreciate your expertise. Thank you for being so thorough. Thank you for, for showing me this. Uh, but I believe God. I'll follow your instructions, but I believe God. Now see, this is important. Why? You're praying in the name of Jesus. So the power of attorney has been entered into. Jesus is presently on the scene. And the only thing that will make Jesus ineffective is a lack of believing what he said. That when you read through the four Gospels, the only thing that ever made Jesus ineffective is when people wouldn't believe. If, if he, he said to them over and over again, people came to him for healing, he said, do you believe I can do this? I believe. Okay, there you go, according to your faith. But then there was a group of people that not very many people got healed, and it says Jesus marveled at their unbelief. Jesus is never unwilling or unable. He's just uninvited. That's, that's just the way it is. He's never unwilling and never unable, just uninvited. And when you invite him into the situation, his willingness and his ability come into play. What he's willing to do, he's able to do. And what he's able to do, he's willing to do. And I've got to put faith in that. 
I've, I've got to put faith in that. Well, should I go to the doctor? Listen, if you've got to ask that question, you better go to the doctor. I mean, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not being hard. I'm not being flippant. I'm just, I, let me share this with you real quickly. I'm going to uh, close. But when there was a man one time that came into our meetings and he had a, a, a tumor in, over his right eye. And to make a long story short, he uh, came up to me one day and he said, Pastor, I just don't think that I can, uh, that I've got faith to uh, believe for this to go all the way away. It had shrunk down uh, uh, greatly. And I said, well, here's the question. Do you have faith that if you go to the doctor that they can get all that in her surgery? He said, yeah. I said, okay, that's where we'll put our faith. And sure enough, he went through surgery and came out of it with flying colors. Don't ever let the devil, see, that's what undermines your faith in the name of Jesus, is the devil will start talking to people, will start talking, well, if you go and you do that, that's a lack of faith. No, it's not. No, it's not. You, you operate where you're at in your faith. Where is your faith level at? And then you operate from there, and faith can grow. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Faith can grow exceedingly. Uh, the book of Luke says your faith can grow up and become greater than anything else that you may be facing. But the point is, is that you're doing what you know you need to be doing and primarily standing on the word in the name of Jesus and you'll see great results. Amen. Well, Father, I just thank you for every person present here today. I thank you, Father, that your healing word is enacting in their lives right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this healing anointing. I thank you for the power of God flowing into every person's body in this room. Father, I thank you that heart conditions are being mended. I thank you that broken places are being healed. Lord, ruptured places are being healed in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for every broken place being whole and healed in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. I, I thank you for the tightening of those parts of, 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 of the body being loosened in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that every aspect of our life comes under this healing anointing in the name of Jesus. We receive it, we have it, we take it, it's ours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, next week, we will, we, I was going to do it last week, and of course I wasn't here. Uh, next week, we will be... Uh, receiving communion and laying hands on anybody that would like hands laid on them to be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we will see you next Thursday at 1.30. God bless you. Thank you for being here.